Ladies and gentlemen, engines and coaches. For many years, Tynmouth Sheds has had enough spaces for only six engines. However, after many months of construction by the Sodor Construction crew, owned and directed by John McCall, who took over from George Packard, we have finally got a bigger shed built. This new shed is bigger and better. On the left side of the entrance is a memorial to the engines who once worked on this railway, and on the right a memorial to the former controllers who once directed this railway, along with a smaller shed to put coaches. I now declare the new and improved Tidmouth Sheds open! I'm so jealous, Gordon. You lot get a brand new shed and us Farquhar lads are still stuck with our old crumbling one. And in addition to this, all the other sheds on the island will get a massive maintenance overhaul. Ha ha ha, I knew you'd be jealous, Thomas. So I asked Ben and Jason a few days ago if they could also do a bit of maintenance on the sheds. Wow, thank you, Gordon. No problem, little Thomas. No problem at all. Oh, we're allowed to come inside now. Stay there, Thomas, and once all of us mainline engines are inside, I'll let you come and have a look too. Yes, please. Thanks, Gordon. Well, I guess I did owe you a favour after you helped me out of that ditch a while ago. Gordon, that was nearly 70 years ago. Really? Well, hasn't the time passed? It's okay, Gordon. You helped me out of the mine too. Oh, yeah, I remember that. I guess I don't owe you a favour. What? <laughs> I'm just kidding, Thomas. Come inside with us. Ooh, these sheds are cosy. And I get my own shed built onto this one. See? You're just long and fat. Haha, <laughs> these are the things I miss about not being able to stay with all of you. Yes? Who's there? Hello, it's Don from Sodor Fuel. Can you please tell Arnold not to come and pick up anything today? We're running low and we only have one fuel tanker. Yes, I'll be right on it. Have a good day. <sighs> good morning, NWR office. How can I help you? Hello, I'm Jim from the Sildor Electrical. Just to let you know, your company hasn't paid the electrical bill in four months. You would appreciate it if you could pay it soon. Yes, I'll be right on it. Ugh. Hello, Jason. What's going on here? Oh my, what a mess. What's been going on? <sighs> Sorry, Dad, it's been a tough morning. Well, I can't help you with the railway forever. You'll have to get an assistant. Yes, I should, but I don't know how I should get one. Well, you know Paul's adopted son, Glyn? Well, he's been living with your mum and I since, well, you know, and he's 13 now. Why don't I ask him if he would like to help you? You can pay him a little bit of money each day, and he can save up to get toys in those new arcade game things. I see. Well, that's a great idea. Thanks, Dad. No problem. You clean up this mess, and I'll go home and collect Glyn. You know, sir, I quite like working with you. <laughs> That's what I said to my dad when I first started helping in the office around your age. We used to go around the railway and talk to the engines that weren't doing any work. It was great. Then in 1977, I got the title of controller, the third controller of this railway. Oh yeah, and you don't have to call me sir, just Jason is fine. Okay, Jason. Also, didn't Paul count as controller? That's what Uncle Ben told me. <sighs> In Dad's eyes, Paul was a controller. From the day Dad became controller, Paul became his second in command. And when Dad was away, Paul ran the railway. I see. You have a lot in common with Uncle Ben. I guess that's where the saying comes from. Like father, like son. I guess so. Winston should be coming in with his last train of the day. I'll ask him if we can take a ride up to Knapford Junction so we can go down to Thomas's branch line to Farquhar. Yay! I've never been down there before. You know, 
Glenn, I think you'd make a good second in command controller. You take just after your dad, like you said I do with mine. Maybe one day you might be the controller. Oh, and when we arrive at Farquhar, we'll go over to the shed so you can talk to the engines. That'll be fun. I'll have something to tell my class at school tomorrow. Most days all I have to say is that I just stayed at home and sat next to Auntie Jenny on the sofa while she did some knitting. I see. You can come out around the railway with me on the weekends if you like. Okay, Jason. 